Hello and welcome, Visionary. This is Creating the Vision and I am your host, Maria Maldonado-Smith. This week, I'm going to start out by telling you my story. I'm going to introduce myself in a way that explains also why this podcast is meaningful to me, is important, and why its purpose and place in this world is something that I know was placed on my heart for me to do. I always tell people I'm going to change the world one vision board at a time, but to get to that point, you got to know how and where I started and where I came from. So I'm going to spend about the next 10 minutes sharing that with you. As a third grader growing up in Lexington, Kentucky, shout out to my hometown and home state because I do no longer live there. Go Cats. I attended St. Peter and Paul Catholic School and it was in downtown Lexington. And my older brother and I actually had to ride the city bus every morning to get downtown to school. I only went there till I was in the third grade. I completed third grade and then I was accepted into a performing arts school. But in the third grade, I had a life changing moment. It was in the third grade that my teacher asked us to get out a piece of paper and write down three things we wanted to do with our life, three goals. And actually, I'm not even sure that she phrased it with our life. I think she just said, get down a piece of paper and write down three goals. Um, I think people interpreted this differently within the class. Some people wrote down what they wanted to do by the end of the week. Some people wrote what they wanted to do by the end of the year or what they wanted to be. She really left it up to our interpretation. So it gave us the freedom to use our imagination and the way that we thought about the question in order to answer it. So I wrote down three things. I said, one, I wanted to graduate from college. My father was an immigrant. He passed away in 2018 from aplastic anemia. And he came to this country at the age of 26, knowing zero English and forged a life for himself. He had an eighth grade education, but he was extremely gifted when it came to working with horses. So eventually he landed in Lexington, Kentucky, where he met my mother and they met, you know, the whole, you know, the rest. However, he didn't really have a formal education. And so it was impressed upon my siblings and I from a very early age, as long as I could remember that we were going to get an education. Our parents were going to invest in that, which is why we rode the city bus from where we lived to downtown Lexington every day to go to school, which then brings me to my third grade classroom where my teacher asks us to write down these three goals. So I write down the first one that I want to graduate from college because of my dad and because of my mom as well. The second thing I wrote down was that I wanted to become Miss Kentucky. And I actually think in parentheses, I put out beside that I wanted to be Miss America. I had started watching the Miss America pageant with my mom probably when I was five or six, maybe even before that. But my first recollection, I think, was around the age of five or six. And I knew then that I wanted to be one of those women. Wasn't necessarily sure how, but I knew that I wanted to be Miss Kentucky and Miss America. The third thing I wrote down was that I wanted to be a United States senator. There you go. But it was these three goals that were written on a piece of paper that were later transferred to a post-it note that would hang on my mirror till I was a senior in high school that would change the course of my life. Because goal setting and accountability became hugely important and a part of really the fabric of my upbringing and approach to life. A dreaming big, of course, being absurdly optimistic and positive is just a part of my personality and who I am. And then helping others by using my gifts. These are the things that those three goals helped start for me. So it wasn't just that I wanted to accomplish these goals, but it actually opened me up to so many other opportunities to focus on things that were important to me or that I wanted to do. My involvement in speech and debate, musicals, dance, and my passion for volunteerism assisted me in being accepted to the University of Kentucky on a vocal performance scholarship, which led me to the Miss America organization so that I could chase my dream of being Miss Kentucky. In May of 2004, I graduated from the University of Kentucky with a BA in political science. So repping that potential United States Senator goal. I had a minor, minor in vocal performance and a minor in psychology. So goal number one was complete. I graduated from college. I did the dang thing. I got it done. That post-it note showed that I kept that dream and goal at the forefront all those years. The following month on June 10th, 2004, after four years of competing, I was crowned the first Hispanic Miss Kentucky and won the opportunity to represent my home state at the Miss America pageant 2005. At the current moment though, I have zero plans to become a United States Senator. If you turn on the TV, if you read anything on social media or online, 
personal fan of New York Times. If you read any article, you will know why I have no desire to become a United States Senator. None whatsoever. <laughs> I share this with the kids because I use this as an example. I use this as an example and I share this with you now. Our goals change. And so this is a perfect example of how what we think we might want at one point in our life can absolutely change as we live our life. As we are building out the vision for what we want our life to become and as we're planning and as we're planting and as we're growing and developing, we learn, we evolve, we become different people. So my plans changed and I have no desire whatsoever to become a United States Senator. Empowering, motivating, serving. Men, women, children, families, team members, small businesses, large corporations, you name it. Every single person on this planet. I want to motivate, I want to inspire, I want to empower. I want to change the world one vision board at a time. That is my goal, that is my purpose, that is my vision, and this is creating the vision. So this podcast is about sharing with you why this is so important to me. It's so important to me because this has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. And eight is a very pivotal age. We remember so much around the age of eight. Science tells us that is really when we start to become that individual free thinker, that child who starts to discern between what it is they want to do with their life. They start to set goals. They start to understand what it means to work towards something and to accomplish it and to achieve it. So that exercise was phenomenally empowering in my life. And it can be the same for you. If you have children, if you have nieces, nephews, if you work with children, I challenge you to do this exercise with them. Teach them that setting goals is something that is so powerful and empowering because it gives them the ability to write down what it is that they want to do with their life. They might accomplish it within a week. Or they could write down goals like mine that take them 10 years, 15 years, and then a changed mind. So I have been thinking about this podcast for a long time. And every time I work with a different group or an individual who has set goals and has seen success from the program that I created called Executive Vision Imagery, it reinforces how important and necessary it is for us to achieve our goals. It gives us a sense of purpose, of meaning, and it empowers us and fuels us to do things that scare us, that push us out of our comfort zone, but that force us to come face to face with the things that we so deeply want in our lives. So is there anything that you are avoiding? Anything that you haven't come face to face with in your life that you want to accomplish? Or if you have, and yet you're still doubting yourself, why? We have to come face to face with the things that we want to achieve. And so for me, it was ripping the band-aid off of an almost 18 year corporate career that was serving me zero purpose, giving me zero meaning, doing nothing for me and facing the fear that I had of starting my own business, starting my consulting firm where I now work to build better teams, to build more cohesive environments where people can show up in their personal life, how they show up in their professional life and vice versa. I help them create the vision for the life that they want personally, professionally, and then pushing them to do the dang thing. That one goal that always shows up in their mental vision board, if they've never made one, or that always shows up in their vision board every year that they keep writing down or they keep thinking about, but they never make happen. We all have that goal. So uncovering that, is the most amazing moment and experience for me. And I hope it is for them too. There are a lot of things that I want you to get out of this podcast, but if there's any one singular thing that you take away from this episode and every episode to come, it wouldn't be that you go make a vision board, although that's amazing. It wouldn't even be that you go write down your goals. If there's one single thing that you take away. It's that you admit and realize and know that you are worthy and so worthy that you should never dim your light for anyone else. So much of the goal setting process asks us to dig deep. At least my process does. It asks us to dig deep, to figure out who we are at the core of who we want to become. I'm constantly working to improve myself. I'm constantly working to become a better person, to become 
a better version of me. But I also know and am happy with who I am and I'm leaning into my most authentic self. And that's what I want for you too. So the next time just you and I meet, we'll be talking about that level of worthiness because it comes up so consistently and so often in my individual sessions, in my group sessions, in my corporate sessions, that level of uncertainty around whether or not we are worth it, whether or not we are worth the investment. Until then though, I want you to think about the goals that you have been failing to write down, that you've been thinking about and thinking that you're going to write them down, but that you haven't actually done. That's your first assignment, so to speak, is to write down your goals. Put them in a place where you're gonna see them every single day. Whether that's a post-it note on a mirror, in a vision board, on a piece of paper taped to the wall. So join me next week where I introduce you to a dear friend of mine and the first person that came to mind when I thought about this podcast. She was my, and is my inspiration for starting this podcast and making it happen myself. So she played a part in my do the dang thing goal. And I'm excited for you to hear her story. So until next time, visionary, write down your three goals and put them somewhere where you can see them.